Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the day that we're gonna get ourselves started on the center panel for the Timeless Tunisian Blanket. Now some of the responsibility of this stitch along is resting on your hands. I can lead you to the water but it's up to you to drink and you have to participate with scooping some of that water. So today I'm going to be taking you through the middle panel and the middle panel is involving a diagram that you see here on page number three. The middle panel is the complete diagram and the narrow panels are just the section between B and C. So what I'm going to do is take you through this. Now you're going to notice the row counts that we have here in order to create this. So the repeating is actually several rows in order to do that and then you keep repeating over and over and over and then you have to come back and finish and do a partial so that you get a blank diamond on the other side and then the last five rows to be the same. So it's harder to look at something like this and actually figure it out um, in counting. So what we've done for you, actually Nita has done that for you, is that we have figured that out and we have a crochet workshop in order for you to download and to be able to fill out. Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern, please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. So here is the workshop that you see and has some information for you. G uh, Anita did a baby size version and so the repeating on the number of times she did it is different. She also changed the hook to a seven millimeter instead of a four and a half. Therefore it will grow taller faster. It will also be a little bit wider as well. So you can get to the results that you want. Now this one here has a total count of, of repeating 12 times but because we had you change the hook to a seven millimeter you may find that you don't have to do it that many times. So that's something that you can determine for yourself. We then flip to the next page. This here is Anita's blanket. It's a baby version. So there's one center panel and then two narrow panels that equals this. Her blanket is 32 inches by 32 inches and this is nine months after using it. And you can see it's been through the wash several times. It holds up really well. A great idea in order to do that. So what we have to do today is that I have to show you what the steps are that's gonna be involved. Now what you have here, my version is going to be a sampler version. So I'm going to take you through one of the repeats and then I'm just gonna uh, finish it off on the other side. But if you wanna keep repeating over and over to make it taller, you can do so. So let's go to the next uh, worksheet. So the best way to do something like this is to actually make a table for yourself because I found myself just writing on scrap pieces of paper. So I decided that we're gonna create a chart. So when we go to start this, we're gonna do rows number one through five of the Tunisian Simple Stitch and after you get it done, just check it off. Then as each row happens is that from number six to 23 is the repeat. And in this repeat, you're going to get uh, one hollow diamond and one full diamond and there also there also will be picos uh, sorry there also be some stitches that'll be on the sides and you can see this is the change. So what we have here is that the instructions give you a count and that count uh, she has done that for us. So she's counted the number of boxes. So let me just zoom in and show you what that means. So what we have here is in row number six we have to do the return pass and we have to do it 19 times and then after the 19th time we add in the pico stitch and then the rest of it all the way across is just doing the regular stitch work. So instead of us having to count the boxes, she's figured that out for us and it will go a lot faster. So after you get that done, you can just check it off. The next row, in the return pass, you will do 18 stitches, then a pico, right? And then you'll do the next two stitches and then a pico. That's how you're gonna do it and that's how it's gonna be. So these ones here that are longer, these are adding in those picots that you see that are on the side edges. So when you look at something like this, see these? That's what those longer ones are. So there's going to be seven stitches, then a pico, nine stitches and a pico, six and a pico, and then nine and a pico. So that's what's gonna happen here. This one here is the full diamond down here. So you can see that maybe in this example, number 19, after the sixth stitch there's a pico, after the second stitch there's a pico, after the seventh there's a pico, and then the two, 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 that's the middle section of the picos all filling in the, the, the box. And so as you do that you can check it off. So let's go back and look at this diagram as a whole because I've left you some options. So in my sample I'm going to be doing right here. I'm going to be following it down and all of us are here on the gold and we're gonna go and do everything and this will all be filmed. 
because I'm only doing a sampler version I'm then going to jump to A and A is over here and A if you see up here it says A is repeating rows number 6 through 14. So you can see it's 6 through to 14 is empty and I'll check it off and then as, as I'm done that I'm done. So then once I have this done I then go to B and finish off. For those that are doing Anita's style she did one full run through and then three repeats and then after she was done she then jumped to A and then again A is just finishing off so that you get the hollow box on the other side and then once that's done you then go to B and check it off. So B is the Tunisian for um, five rounds. This here for the 12 that's the full sample that is as is as a <laughs> it's as written. However if you wanna stop at any point you can do so. So if you so maybe you just wanna do 10 repeats you can stop and you can jump to A and then finish with B. So this is how this is gonna work and the second one this uh, the narrow panels are exactly the same. You will see that the instructions are more simple here because there's none of those side P, uh, side extra, extras to work on. See these? They're not there on the narrow panels. The narrow panels should probably go faster for us. At least I hope, right? So we're gonna use a seven millimeter size um, hook and it's an afghan hook. It, mine is approximately about 10 inches and uh, what we're gonna do is go back and forth and we're gonna make this and let me just show you a sample of my practice that I was working on. So this is my practice sample. So we have the five rows. Do you see the curling? That is natural. That's why we're doing a border for this thing. That is a normal thing because the tension is all on the right side of the work, the front side. And when we're doing this and I'm hoping that I can really uh, relax a little bit more but it may annoy you that it's gonna roll in front of my face for a little while until I get more onto the hook that the weight of this will stay uh, balanced. If not we'll just have to fake it or make it right. So then I run through the six through to um, the 23rd. So you'll have a hollow box with these and then a solid box with these and then etc. and you keep on moving on. So this is what the uh, center panel looks like. I'm really nice and simple. I'm going to demonstrate on how to do Tunisian. There was a warm up workshop but I'm not gonna assume that you did it but that is available to you and we'll start immediately. So what, whatever yarn you wanna use um, it can be the Red Heart Super Saver if you want to. Because I did increase the hook to a seven millimeter their work should relax a little bit more. Remember in Tunisian that the hook size should be about two sizes bigger than the recommendation of the ball band. So that's just something that why it's much taller, it's much, it's, it's like that. So a four and a half millimeter it'll be very tight and you'll also use a lot more yarn because it's gonna take a lot longer to get to the height and also to the width. So you may find that you maybe not have to do so many center or narrow panels because this is actually wider than the original because it's a different hook. So trying to save your time and I think let's just give the lesson. We're gonna just start immediately and we'll do the lesson as we go. And one thing that you should know as well sorry for being long winded. This thing is going to be closed captioned by my team. It takes 11 minutes per one minute of sound. So I'm gonna be very respectful of the, the team. So as we start the turn pass to give you that information I'm gonna read it to you off the worksheet and then we're just gonna complete that together so that there's no uh, none of me talking because it's gonna this video I think is gonna be very long. So without further ado let's grab our hook. Whatever yarn you're gonna play with I'm going to just try. I just I'm just dying to see what this is gonna look like the Red Heart Super Saver Ombre and see how this goes today. And that's my journey. Let's begin. So let's begin our journey by doing a slip knot and this is considered an intermediate level almost advanced level. If you like the center panel and wanna do it more than one time for your sample there's nothing stopping you. There's no crochet police as far as I know. So let's create a slip knot and place our Tunisian or our Afghan hook. It's called an Afghan hook technically. It's got a stopper on the other side so it prevents the work from falling off. So we're going to start and just start by chaining uh, 40. So you're gonna operate it like a regular crochet hook and chain 40. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and five and go all the way. It's gonna feel a bit sloppy in your hands but once you start doing the Tunisian work this will tighten up guarantee it. That's just the way it is. So get 40 done. Meet me back here in a moment. So I now have 40 chains done. Let's begin and start row number one. In Tunisian, let me just pull this out. In Tunisian when the hook is moving forward that's called the forward pass and when the hook is moving backwards it's the return pass. 
in the picot stitches that we'll be doing in the future, it's the return pass that creates those picots and it's the forward passes that secure those picots. So I usually refer to as the boat going out to sea. So it's a forward, the boat is moving forward out to sea and then return pass, the boat is moving back to dock. So it's dropping off its passengers. So let's put this back in. Working down the back hump of the chain, you're going to count to the second one. So one and two, turn it over and get the back hump of the chain only. And you're going to insert your hook and you're going to yarn over and pull through. When you push, you wanna get it beyond the throat of the hook and into the, the regular shaft here because it's that shaft that determines the stitch. Okay, so don't just stay here and just go for another one. Make sure you just slide it onto that shaft. Once that one's done, you'll go to the next one. And once you go to the first back hump, the chain will stay turned upside down so all the other stitches should be able to be easy, easily found. So I'm going to just do 10 quietly to myself and I'll leave and then just continue it down. So I'll just do a nice slow demonstration for 10 more. Okay, so I just did 10 more. You saw how that's done. So continue down the rest of your chain collecting and we'll do a count. There should be 40 loops on this by the time you get to the other side. We are gonna verify that before moving on. Please see me at the end of the row and put me on pause now. So I'm coming up all the way to the end. If it's bunched up like that, that's okay. If you wanna stretch it out, it's okay. But just try to come up with a system that works for you. So I'm just coming right to the end and one more. Before you move on, you need to make sure that there are 40 loops. So just count in 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, and 40. So once I have verified that, we're now ready for the return pass and the return pass is very important to know. In crochet, when we start a row, normally we don't have anything like this on a hook. But when we start a row, we chain a certain number and then we just blast our way across. In Tunisian, the chain that builds the row is actually done in the return pass. So once all these loops are on, it's actually this side that we grow it to build up the row to be higher. We never do it on this side. So what you have to do to get started and let me just bring you in nice and close here is that you're going to yarn over and just pull through the one loop. That's considered a chain one as if you're building. And there's still only 40 loops on the hook once you do that. So this is considered a chain. Once I show you the, the, uh, the forward and the return pass for row number two, I'm gonna show you how important that was to know that. Now the rest of these you can just yarn over and pull through two loops at a time. So using your hand, just help pull that off the hook. So just keep it nice and balanced. And just keep yarning over and pulling it through two all the way back. And as I'm going back, you're going to notice is that there is gapping spaces that are left. And it's those gapping spaces that get filled in on the forward pass. So when you're coming back, it's gonna look like a picket fence as, as I usually mentioned to other people. Okay. So then the forward pass, what happens is that we close it off and so we add more privacy to the fence so we can't see the neighbor. So on the return pass, we see the neighbor and on the forward pass, we're closing off the fence to build our wall. So as I'm pulling off, I can see that this is starting to stretch. So just use my hand and push up and get it and it's easier and you'll get your own motion as you're going all the way across. So stop when you have one loop left on your hook at the end of the return pass. So I'm coming up all the way to the end. 
Now when you come to the end there should just be one loop left onto your hook and then you're good to go. And so now you have this. This is considered one of five. So the Tunisian rows one of five you can put in the little box. I just put a, a little you know how you do one, two, three and four and then put a line through it like five. I just put a tick for number one. Whenever you start in Tunisian rows for the forward pass you do not worry about the edge at all. That is not part of anything. Okay. But you need that in order to have an edge. Your very first stitch is always this vertical right here in this particular project. It could be like any kind of stitches but it's always the second one in from the edge. So what we wanna do is call the Tunisian simple stitch. So all you have to do is you don't chain one because you're not returning. You're just starting the forward pass and what this is going to do it's gonna pull up in this loop and it's gonna make the top bar section fall down into the middle therefore blocking the neighbor. So just sneak behind the vertical and you're going to yarn over and pull through and shove it down your shaft. See how it just fell into place by just doing that? So then you get the next vertical going in, pull through and shove. Neat right? So what I'll do is that I'll demonstrate 10 of these quietly and let's start now. and that was 10. Neat right? So what I want you to do is go all the way around uh, all the way down to the other side but I don't want you to do the last one. I wanna show you what you have to do. It's special and it will kill your project if you don't finish off the forward pass properly and we'll be doing that in a moment. So please go all the way to the end of the row and meet me back here and uh, meet me back here in just a moment and we'll do the last stitch together because it's special. We haven't taught you how yet. So I'm coming close to the end the very last one will make or break your project and we gotta be very careful. We have two stitches left. Do you see that? You got a vertical and then an edge. It's the edge one that if you do not finish it properly you end up with this most god awful gap that you've ever saw and you wish it was never there. And how you get rid of that is that I want you to twist it forward. So I want you to ignore what's on the hook and when you put th that on you need to make sure, remember how we did a chain one? This here is the chain one. Noticing that there's two strands that are on top of the hook that are part of that chain one. That's what you need to go through. Okay? So you just gotta manipulate it and go through that one. Then you yarn over and pull through. So that will fill in so that there will be no holes on your, on your end. Then you have to return, do your return pass and it's what I already told you. So we have to chain one first and then we have to pull through twos all the way back to the other side. So I've already showed you how to do that. So let me meet you back on the other side and we'll quickly review because you can do the rest of the three rows that are left before the pattern begins and I'll see you at the end of the row now. So I'm coming back all the way. This is classified as doing row number two. So you did number two in the forward and the return. So this is the second one out of five. I now want you to complete and you'll do it on your own rows number three, four and five exactly what you already know. Make sure that you treat the edges like I showed you just a few seconds ago on going into the chain, right? Make sure you do that and when we come back we'll have those five rows completed and then we'll start in the pattern of doing the diamonds. So please now complete the rows number three, four and five doing the Tunisian simple stitch and I'll be back in just a moment.
So I now have my five rows completed. Checked it off on my list. I'm using this just as much as you are. So I've changed my mind and my approach on how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take you through number six and seven in a detailed manner and then the rest of it I'm just going to do the work. I'll say what it is and then I'll say I'll meet me back and we'll do it off because basically you can look at the sheet. It's available. It's a free download. You can check it off because once you understand how this is working you can check, 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 check and move your way through. Let's do row number six and let's talk about that because the next time you do row number six it's gonna be slightly different because when you finish on the end of row number 23 it says go back to the number six. So because you're already doing picos here when you do the six again the sixth time, the sixth one then when we do it for the very first time right now there's not gonna be a pico to worry about. So that's just the only difference that there's gonna be in the way that it's going to look. Okay so there's never a time where the pico stop unless it's at the very end of all the repeats when you do the final five. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's begin number six in a detailed manner. So the rolling is happening. Once there's more work and more weight the roll will just be further from the hook. So you just gotta put up with it just for a little bit longer. As you start row number six, the forward pass, there's never anything really to worry about other than when you do picos that are securing but because it's our very first time doing row six, there's no picos to worry about. So starting in the very next one, you're just gonna do a Tunisian simple stitch in the forward pass right to the end and I will see at the end, make sure that you go into that special one right at the edge and then we're gonna do number six in the return pass which is where all the action is and I'll meet you at the end of this row in a moment. Okay, I've now come all the way across for row number six in the forward pass. Row number six in the return pass though is when you're going to focus on that number 19. So I've gone into the edge here. I've not done a chain one yet to return back. So make sure that you do the chain one before you start counting anything. And what you have to do after the chain one is done, you have to count 19 of the stitches being done. So now that the chain one is done, you're gonna yarn over and pull through the, a pair. Okay, that's considered one of 19. So then you'll do the next one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 and pull through the 19th one. The Pico is now about to go in here. We do have a standalone video for Picoing if you need it. It's available. If you follow the information uh, that's in the video description you will be able to have access to that as well. But I will demonstrate it right now. So to do a Pico you have to chain three Ignore the rest of this that's on the hook and just chain three. So go one, two and three. And because there's no number after 19, this remains, this means that the remaining of the stitches that are left are just gonna be handled properly. So you're just gonna yarn over and pull through two which includes that chain in this one. So there's, and you don't need to count because there's nothing left. You would have to count it and that would be considered one if you're gonna run into another Pico after a certain amount of stitches. But in row number six, you're just gonna continue to pull through two all the way back to the other side. And maybe at the end of the row and we'll talk about the forward pass in a moment. So I'm coming all the way to the end. I've been doing a lot of Tunisian lately so I've gotten much faster at it, at it before I started actually doing my practice for this sample. So now we're going to start row number seven. So in the forward pass what we just have to do is the Tunisian simple stitch but what we have to watch out for is that chain three and we need to secure that in a position when we get there. So starting in the very next vertical start doing your Tunisian simple stitch until you get almost to that pico area and then I'll show you how to secure that into position permanently and I'll see you there in a moment. This is number seven in the forward and the return pass. So as I'm continuing along something I should tell you these picos once we get it do you see how there's two lines of the verticals going up and the picos kind of pushing those apart. These picos are actually going to rest in between those lines so these vertical lines never get changed. They never change number. They continue straight up even when a pico is in between them. So I want to continue to Tunisian simple stitch right to the very last one 
where the chain is coming into this vertical. Now use your fingertip and push the pico or the chain three space forward and you see this vertical right here. We have to get there but we have to make sure that this is laying in front and it just takes two seconds once you get moving on this. So what you can do is just go in to so just kind of lay it in front and just follow the verticals up and as you go in you can just use your finger and push that pico through. You will get used to doing that in the sense that it will be really quick, right? And then once that's in you can just yarn over and pull through to secure that. So it's still the Tunisian simple stitch. The only difference is is that you're making that chain three space collapse and you're making it collapse to the right side of the work, the front side. So there's no other picots to worry about on this uh, row. This is number seven. So you continue to simple stitch yourself all the way to the end and make sure that you handle that edging properly. So I will see you at the number seven in the return pass and we'll talk about what those picots are going to be coming back. So I'm at number seven in the return pass. So I'm gonna chain one and then I'm gonna start doing my counting. So the picots will appear, the chain threes will appear after the 18th and two stitches after it. So let me show you how this is done. So I'm going to take you through this one and then the rest of it we're gonna fast forward uh, in the tutorial just to give you that information. So we're going to yarn over and pull through the first 18 stitches instead. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. And this makes sense because this box is going to be filling out so I'm gonna, I'm one over if you've noticed. So this is where the pico is going to be after the 18th. So we chain three. So one, two, and three. And as per the worksheet, the next two are going to be regular stitch work. So you yarn over, pull through two. So this is considered one. And then you yarn over, pull through two. That's considered the second one. So this is one stitch and two. So that's what that two means after that. Then you're going to pico again. So you'll chain three. So one, two, and three and there's nothing after that uh, number two on the list. So that means that we're gonna yarn over and pull through sets of two all the way to the end. So I'm gonna take you through the forward pass then on row number eight and then um, we're gonna continue our journey. I wanna give you a set of instructions to think about. I'm just not ready to give it to you yet and continue and I'll see you at the end of the row. And I'm already there. <laughs> okay, so row number eight. What I'm going to ask you to do is that now that we're gonna go back across, I'm gonna show you how to secure those picots in. But I'm gonna give you the instruction uh, for the return of what those counts are. And when you get to the end, I need you just to do the forward pass because it's just sing, uh, simple stitching all the way. So to do number eight, I'm not worrying about the counts of the picots yet because I'm not on the return pass yet. So I wanna just start immediately and start simple stitching and I will see you at the two uh, chain three or the pico spots just to make sure that you understand how those are being secured in and then we're gonna keep on moving. So I'm continuing along. So the chain three is right here. So I'm gonna come into the vertical before the chain three as my simple stitch. Then you're gonna move it forward and you want the vertical that is after this. So see the lines so it's right there. So just kind of move it forward and, and go into that vertical. And just push it forward to the good side. It just takes a few seconds once you get used to it. It's better, it's easier when this is sitting on my lap versus the table. So make sure it's kind of pulled together nice and tight. So don't be sloppy about it. And then you're gonna go into the next vertical. And then the chain three is right after that one again. So moving it forward just grab the vertical that's right after it. So 
so that and then there's nothing else left to the end and then just can proceed on over. This is still row number eight in the forward pass. Now moving forward in this tutorial I'm at the return pass in number eight. So the number 17 and the fourth. So you'll do 17 and then chain three then another four stitches and then chain three and then go all the way. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is to do that instruction and when you get to the end I want you to do your forward pass securing in those picots and I'm gonna pick you up then on row number nine after that. So again number eight is after the 17th stitch then you'll do the next four and then uh, then your picot and etc. So please do this. This is row number eight in the return pass. You just gotta count and just do the work. So this is part of you um, collecting your own water as per se and use that worksheet to help you. So I'll see you and we'll start the return pass in number nine after this but let's get this done first. I've already done my forward pass in row number nine and I'm ready to give you instruction. So what we're doing in row number nine then is that we're starting to introduce the bottom one of these and then heading on over and then in row number ten we then get these two and the middle section that's the very middle of the diamond and then in the next one then we have this little one. So you're going to notice is that there's gonna be some bigger counts because of that and once these outside one pieces are done then what's going to happen then it returns back to a nice flat and lots of space before you get back to your picots. Let's do the return of number nine. So the return of number nine you're going to do seven stitches then chain three, nine stitches then chain three, then six stitches, chain three and then nine stitches, chain three and that'll take you all the way back and then I want you to do your forward pass. Please do number nine now. I've already done the forward pass in number ten. So the return going back is the big section because we have the two that are part of the florets here. So we have one on each side. We're also at the largest point going into the, the square here and then we have the other floret on the other side. So what we have for the counts is a six and then chain three, then two, chain three, seven and chain three, eight and chain three, seven and chain three and then two and chain three all the, and then go all the way to the back and then meet me back here at the forward here in and we'll do the return pass of number eleven in just a moment. So make sure you check it off on your sheet. So I'm just checking off number ten and the forward pass of number eleven is already done. So the return pass then is no, uh, after the seventh then the ninth, the sixth and then the ninth and you're going to notice then in row number eleven on the return pass is that the biggest part of the diamond is now done and it's gonna start narrowing off and the last piece of these outside florets are gonna be done as well. So please do number eleven and then the return pass, oh sorry the forward pass of number twelve and I'll meet you back here in a moment. I'm now ready for the return pass on number twelve. So number twelve we don't worry about the florets. We're just worrying about this and it's getting more narrow for the boxes. So after the seventeenth stitch then after the fourth stitch and that will be number twelve returning back. And this is gonna continue. I'll see you back here in a moment. Get your forward pass and I'll see you at the return pass of number thirteen. So let's do number 13. I'm at the return pass point. So after the 18th and also the second stitch for your chain threes go all the way to the other side and then do your forward pass and I'll see you back here on number 14 in a moment. So listen carefully. So we have the 14th row in the return pass and we're gonna do the 19th stitch. When you get all the way to the other side here this is the ending of a repeat if you were doing this in the future. Let me just take you back to the diagram here or to the worksheet. So in the worksheet we're gonna go all the way down and once we get here it says go to A. A is from six to fourteen. So the ending of the fourteenth is when this returns all the way back. So it's before you start doing the forward pass all over again. However because we're at this point in the tutorial and we still have more of the pattern to do before the repeat actually begins itself we I'm going to have you go all the way back do your nineteenth and then do your forward to get ready then for the next row after that which is row number 15. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's continue then and do row number 14 now. So let's do row number 15 and I was filming this last Friday. It's now Monday so if I say a few things that are duplicate that's re that's the reason because I probably forgot I said it already. So in the return pass the 19 stitches will go in and then you'll do your chain three and then you'll go all the way back. Please do then your forward pass uh, then for row number 16 and then I'll pick you up then. 
Okay, row number 16 on the return pass. We're gonna do it after the 18th and then we'll do two stitches and then another chain three and then that'll take you through number 16. So please do that and we'll meet you and do your forward pass and I'll see you on 17 next. So let's move on to row number 17. I cannot emphasize enough pull out that worksheet because it's gonna get complicated because this part here is a solid diamond so the repeating steps are just easier if you're looking at the, the, the worksheet. So in row number 17 you're going to do 17 uh, stitches and then chain three and then you're gonna do two stitches and then chain three and then two more stitches and then chain three and then you'll go all the way to the end. In the next row uh, and then I want you to do your forward pass to get ready for number 18. You're going to notice that in number 18 it's gonna get a little bit more complicated and that is because you're gonna be starting to apply these again in that row. So let's start with number 17 with going 17 over then two and two and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So let's do number 18. Don't be scared you can do this. You're going to be starting off and doing just the first section here of one of these and then you're going to be doing a full set of a full diamond here and then you'll be doing one on this side. So just to recap then it's gonna be after the seventh, the ninth, the second, the second, the second and then the ninth again. Just please use your worksheet. Um, it is so much easier if you can do that and I will see you back here. Make sure you do your forward pass and I'll see you on number 19 in a moment. So let's move on to the largest instruction round our row of everything in this particular project and it's row number 19. Now you'll be noticing that you've been filling in this so it's not been hollow. So once you do the first one you know that you just gotta do two and then another one and then two and another one. So this uh, row that we're about to do is gonna be the largest width of the diamond before it returns back to being more narrow again. So in number 19 I'll read it to you and but please follow that on the worksheet. So it's gonna be after the sixth, the second, the seventh, the second, the second, the second, the second and then seventh and then two. So this here is the largest width of this. So let's do this and this is number 19. Okay number 19 is done and just checking it off on my list. Number 20. Now we're just gonna finish the florets. So we're just gonna do the solid one or the single one that's on the top of the florets here and then this is now going to start going in. So if you are paying attention to how things are being built on these um, things you may actually not have to read the pattern so carefully when you understand the flow of where those chain threes are going. So just kind of pay attention to that. See if you can catch that, that glimmer of hope because you may be able and test yourself with this one. Do you need to count back to the seventh or can you actually see where it is? Mm -hmm. So in row number 20 here it's the seventh and then the ninth and then the second, the second, the second and then the ninth and then please do your forward pass and meet me on the 21st row in a moment. Okay now back at the end of uh, starting at number 21. So now the florets are done. So now you can go directly. Now this is my second time actually doing this. Um, if you recall I showed a sample near the beginning and so because it's my second time I'm finding myself going through this faster and I'm finding myself not obsessively counting because I can see exactly where the stitches need to go. So I just wanna still check it off on my list but just verify where I am. So number uh, 21 we're gonna go and do the 17th and then the second and then a second. They don't have to worry about the sides anymore so it's a nice clean shot across. Let's do the 21st row now. Number 22. So we're gonna head back and we're gonna do the after the 18th and then after the second and then go all the way and then do your forward pass and I'll see you on number 23 in a moment. Let's move on to the 23rd row. So I'm only gonna do the return pass then on the 23. I'm going to do my 19th and then I'm gonna stop here because now we have to make a decision. Do we wanna do another repeat? Um, how many repeats are you going to do? Myself I'm only doing a sampler. So myself I just have to do one of these at the end. So no matter how many times you repeat um, we'll talk about that when we when I get to the end and I'll be right over here on this side. And I will come back across so it's the 19th and then I'll see you back here in a moment. So let's talk repeating. I'm at now the end of number 23. It's finished. I'm at the return pass. Now I have to make a decision. Am I going to continue to repeat these over and over? And so you have to look at your sheet. So myself I'm only doing a sampler so I'm going to proceed to A after this. And I don't need to refilm this for you because A is rows number six through 14 and that's why those are empty 
here so I can check it off on my list. This is going to complete so that the last section before the ending is a hollow diamond. If you are wanting to go on the next three repeats if you do that is Anita's size baby blanket. So if you just repeat now six through fourteen again and again and again then you'll proceed to A and then you'll go back to rows number six through fourteen. Remember that the video has video chapters applied to it so it will you can just uh, go to that. Once you get that done then for everybody you're going to do five rows a simple stitching just like we started in the very beginning to have it in balance. So what I'm going to do right now is that I'm going to rely on you to do that but I'm going to show you how to fasten off or cast off now but make sure you get your repeating done and you're at the end and you get your five rows of Tunisian simple stitch before you do it but I'll show you how to fasten off now. So what you should do if you're fastening off you're gonna do it Tunisian simple stitch style because you've been doing the simple stitching and all you're just going to do is slide your hook in and you're gonna yarn over, pull through and through and then sliding in, pull through and through and you're just gonna do that all the way across. That's how you're gonna cast off or fasten off. Now this is also called binding off when you go to do this. Make sure that you are relaxed when you go to do it. If you've been Tunisian for a while you're probably more relaxed than you were before you started and it'll look like that and then when you get to the other side of this you're just gonna fast, uh, just completely cut the yarn and just weave in the ends. So I'm gonna rely on you to do that but for myself I have to get the sample done for the repeating of doing six through fourteen just once and then five rows of Tunisian simple stitch and then um, I can move on myself for my sampler size. So please use the video chapters in order to get yourself forward and I will see you next time as we continue the center or sorry the side narrow panels. Those are much easier to do because they're just really just a small section and so if you wanna do those instead of a big center one that's completely up to you and the creativity lies in your hands. This is the T Timeless Tunisian Blanket by YourInspirations.com.